is there no age at which a parent shouldn't be teaching kids about political or social stuff? I know I noticed you you have this ninety nine books the kids <laughs> yes. just put out, and I'm like, so I start reading it, and I'm like, oh, this is interesting, and this is lots of fun. In the first section, from birth to four, there's a pro labor, pro environment book. There's a there's a I mean, it, it it's as if we can't leave these children alone. They have to be, they have to be indoctrinated very, very young. Well, I mean, think about it. You know, so you can't have... just let them read stories and make up their own minds. Well, let's let's take a couple of things there. Did you read any Dr. Seuss books growing up? You know, it's not that big in England to be honest. Okay, Dr. Yeah. Seuss, but sure. And I don't, I don't love Dr. Seuss myself. No, I don't honestly, either. the sort of the goofiness of it has always been kind of a turnoff for me. But I mean, he's you know. Books like The Lorax are, you know, considered sort of stone cold classics. You're the Turtle, which is his book about totalitarianism. And so, you know, I think to a certain extent, whether we consider these books like, you know, whether I think that we've accepted into the canon a lot of books where the authors are bringing in big ideas about the world and how it works. I mean, Charlotte Zolotow, who is a you know real classic mid-century children's author, wrote her first book, The Park Book, in part because she was irritated that there were no books for children that were set in the city, right? They were all sort of these rural pastoralist fantasies. And, you know, it's a very innocent book in a lot of ways, but it includes, you know, the it's sort of the, a day in the life of a park. And so, it includes, you know, someone who's homeless who sleeps in the park and it doesn't really comment on it. It's just there. But kids are really curious. They ask questions. And so, you know, I mean, my daughter started asking me why people had different color skin when they were really young. And I'm not going to, you know, sit down with her and talk about like the full history of systematic racism in the United States because that requires me to involve you know, explaining like economics and there are just all these layers of things that she's not going to so get did, but how she, did you how did you answer that question let's see i mean i guess we talked about how people come from different parts you know people and their families come from different parts of the world and you know like we all look a little different in various ways and there's a whole continuum of how people look i mean but when when she asked why, what, what we, your, we didn't we did not get into questions, these yeah questions we didn't are, get into mendelian gen- genetics but did you get into like Exposure to the sun, like that's why people in the middle of the earth <laughs> tend to have darker skin than people at the other ends. Yes, that... I, you know, I'm look. I've had a second child since then. I'm so <laughs> sleep deprived. I'm not totally yeah, sure. I can't, I I can't believe you're doing anything, frankly, when you have one year old and a four year old. You know, but yeah, but you know, in terms of, I mean, kids ask questions about this stuff. You would be amazed at, of course, what they ask, and so, I mean. I feel like, you know, people always make fun of people on the Internet who tell stories about their like politically precocious children. But the stuff that they pick up on and ask about is astonishing. Right. I mean, you know, my husband is Matt Gertz, senior fellow at Media Matters. He's the guy who sort of cracked the code on figuring out that Trump was like live tweeting his Fox shows DVR'd. And so, like, she's heard about Donald Trump. She knows about Twitter. She likes to, she periodically will say, like, you're a Twitter as an insult, which I think is incredibly that's funny. A, that's that's um, fantastic. But she asked us at dinner the other day, she's like, if Donald Trump is a bad boy, why do you laugh about him? I was like, well, damn, <laughs> how do I answer that question? 